We're going to talk now about Ellie Gould. She was a bright, popular sixth form student who should have turned 18 last week. But in May, she was murdered in her own home by a former boyfriend. We're going to talk to Ellie's mum and some of Ellie's friends who are fighting to keep her memory alive. They're campaigning for self-defence to be taught in schools. And Carol is with us as well. Carol, Carol Gould, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be talking you. to you shortly. But what we want to do is just remind our viewers of actually what happened. Her life was full. Um, yeah, she was perfect daughter, really. Ellie Gould was a bright 17-year-old student who loved horse riding and dreamed of a career in the police. She was studying for her A-levels last May when she was murdered by her ex-boyfriend, Thomas Griffiths. The night before, she'd cooled off their three-month relationship to concentrate on her schoolwork. She felt a bit suffocated and a bit um, trapped within it and that she didn't really know what to do because she's really independent. The next day, Griffiths stabbed her repeatedly while she was studying at home alone. We trusted him. We welcomed him into our home. He celebrated her 17th birthday with us. Three months later, he murdered her. It was chilling. I will tap your head in. Rah, rah, rah. Clap, 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 clap. Ellie should have been celebrating her 18th birthday last week. Her friends were determined she wouldn't be forgotten. We had always, it was almost like a big milestone in mine and Ellie's relationship is that we get to 18 and we can go out and just be adults together and go drinking and do everything an 18 year old should be able to do. But obviously that's been ripped away from us and it's just the idea that I won't be able to do that with her is literally heartbreaking. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Because obviously he got to he got to have his 18th birthday and he took our Ellie's away from her. So we're going to talk a little more about that film. Ellie's mum, Carol, as you know, is with us here. And some friends, some really close friends, Harriet, Ellie and Tilda, all with us on Morning. the sofa. Morning. Now, it's fair to say that there was some difficult moments mm -hmm. for you just watching mm -hmm. that back, Carol. Mm -hmm. and, but I have to say straight up, and it's important people know this at home, there was laughter on the sofa uh, a moment or two, close friends, and you're watching just some of those pictures of times you had together and I, I think maybe it's quite important it must be comforting for you seeing Ellie's friends still able to look mm. at that and think you know get something from those mm. images it's a comfort for me as well when we first used to um, meet up it was really painful because it was just an awful reminder of what we'd lost but I see them a lot don't we we meet up a lot and it, it, it's so much easier now and it is a real comfort Ellie would, with them. Ellie would have been 18 last week yeah. And this is tough, so we are mm -hmm. so grateful that you're here mm -hmm. talking to us because there is purpose to, yeah. to what you want to say. Um, how, how, how are you? How, how was it? It was difficult for all of us, wasn't it, girls? Um, myself and my husband, we went away for the, for the night. We went down to the coast. Um, being by the sea seemed to help in between the tears, but it was a painful day. But these guys all got together as a group with the boys as well and they kept sending us photographs of the day at school the memorial at the school and then their evening out uh harry do you want to pick up on that Tell us uh, in terms like. of what you yeah. you know what you did and, and how you've been trying to just rationalize things in some ways dealing with things yeah well we've tried to focus our efforts on trying to help other people i know for ellie's birthday we tried to take time to celebrate her life and to try and treat it as if she was here with us and try to just be positive about how we did spend time with her rather than mourning on the fact that she is no longer with us. Tilda, I saw you upset in, in that film. Yeah. And it's very difficult, it's very difficult, but as Carol said, the laughter is comforting as well. What was Ellie like? What kind of friend was she? I just, I don't have a word to describe her. She was just the most amazing, bubbly, charismatic person I've ever met. And I think that's why it's so hard because she's irreplaceable. I can't think of anybody, I don't think I'll ever be able to fill the void that she's left. So what are you doing now? Because the circumstances surrounding her murder with the former boyfriend, you've, you've decided that perhaps if Ellie was more forearmed, yeah. 
could defend herself more. This is a, an idea you have that perhaps she she might have escaped this death. Yeah. What are you doing about it? So at the moment we've started a petition, and yesterday it hit ten thousand signatures. So we're hoping now that the par like parliament will hopefully be able to pick up on that and maybe actually make a change. Um, we're just hoping that pushing for this self-defence to be brought into schools will help prevent this happening from anybody else. Ellie, what does that look like? Why do you think you need that? And it's for both sexes, I'm assuming. Yes, definitely. Um, well, for our year, we're all sort of going off to uni next year, so it will be amazing for all of us just to know those skills anyway. Mm. But on top of that, of course, if Ellie potentially knew self-defence, she could have gotten away. And it's just the idea of saving anyone else from... I imagine like something tells me that trying to do something is helpful in itself yeah, for all of you, isn't it? You know, because it's so hard to deal with everything that's happened. Actually trying to change something going forward. Yeah. It sort of, it makes something so negative have a little light of positive in it. It mm. just, it helps us get through it that little bit extra. Carol, have you been able to find any of those things? Yeah, I mean, I'm amazed by the girls and it gives me some strength as well. Um, that something positive can come out of this terrible tragedy and you know I'm concerned for them going to university because Griffiths had us all fooled nobody had any idea what a dangerous individual he was and obviously they're going off to university in to different cities or as a residence you just do not know who is amongst you and obviously it's it, it can't be proven that if Ellie had mm. the capability to mm. defend herself that she she would have there were mm. of there were marks on Griffiths showing that she did try to defend mm. herself I suppose what this makes you feel, and Harriet, you, you, only you can describe this, only you can explain, is, as Carol said, you're off to university soon. Mm -hmm. And when something like this happens, such close proximity to your, to your life, how do you feel now as a teenage woman? Yeah, it's something that's really shaken a lot of people. I mean, he was in our friendship group. We saw each other every day. We were in a big group of friends and we just had so much fun together. Even the last lunchtime, we were all messing around in the study room. And to think that someone that you can't, you would never guess could do something like this has done something to someone so special to us. What does that do when it comes to feelings of trust? I mean, like you say, you're going to university now. Tilda, for example, when you, when you look at friends, when, you, when you're, you're making friends, when you're walking around, how, how has this affected you? It changes your complete perspective of how you see people. So I would have seen, I would have seen myself as quite an open trusting person before but to think that someone that portrayed themselves as so normal could flip like that and end up taking a life is just terrifying. Ellie, I mean sometimes it, there's a common theme sometimes when people have been through very traumatic incidents and part of it is the fear that you've talked about and how it changes your mindset but sometimes there's another bit of you that kicks in which is the bit that goes I will not be changed by someone doing an evil thing. Yeah. And sometimes that can rise up. It's almost like an anger in a way, but it's a response, which is that you will not change me yeah. because of what you've done. Is that part of what this is all about? It is a, it's a bit of it, yes. I think we've just, we don't want him to ruin anyone else's life. Mm. He's taken one life. He can't ruin anyone else's at this point. I think it's just trying to stay strong and keep on that positive line and as as horrible as this has been, we need to stay positive about it. What is this? you said you kind of you meet up with the mm -hmm. girls, Carol, mm -hmm. and, and you see them. That must offer some comfort, but also some investment from you into seeing them grow and cope as well. Yeah, I mean I know just how difficult the last nine months have been for them. Um, you know they were caught up in the investigation on the day it all happened. They've been interviewed by the police. They could have possibly helped to have been witnesses in if it went to a trial. Um, it's pain, dreadful for them. There's no other words to describe it. And they've had to carry on with their studying and deal with all this. So to, you know, to try and find the strength to do this campaign is amazing. Sometimes, Carol, you look for small things mm. out of dreadful things mm. to cling on to. And often the kindness of strangers and all those things, people who get in touch, mm. you don't know who've been affected by seeing what your family's gone through. Has that been part of what's been going on for you? We've had hundreds of letters from complete strangers, cards um, wishing us well, um, and they obviously don't have our address, they just have our name, and they put the town where we live, and this, the post arrives. It's amazing, so we know how much it struck a chord with the nation, this case, and how shocked 
the How nation's How does that affect been. you when those, those things arrive? It's, it's lovely, the support from the nation, actually. It, it's really, you know, it's, it's really kind. It kind of keeps some positivity yeah, about the yeah, world, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, yeah. It's not all, I mean, and that's the message, I suppose, for you three particularly, you mm. know, going forward. I mean, you will never lose this. You will never uh, That sense of loss will never go. But people are lovely. The world is a, is a, is a decent place overall, mm. and that's kind of something to take away. On that note, what are the plans? Yes. <laughs> what are the plans? What are the future for you guys? You're going to u uni next, is it? That, is that the next step? Yeah. yeah, I think for most of us, university is the next step in... Um, Come on, Harriet, we've got a potential England volleyball player here. What? Really? Yes. <laughs> Come on, Harriet. Yeah. Um, I'm on the um, junior women's England talent pathway for volleyball. Okay. You see, and look how excited you are. <laughs> I know, I'm that. banking on there is, her. There, celebrate yourselves, celebrate your lives and enjoy mm. them and you'll never lose the memory. Just remember the plaque on the school. At the What's school. The What's the There's plan? a plaque, isn't there, um, mm. at the school memorial. Can anyone remember the wording? Yeah, it says, um, I've lived my life full of joy and fun. Live on now, make me proud of what you'll become. That's what she'd want. Oh, you can't beat them. You can't <laughs> beat them. No. You can't. All those words, dear. Thank you so much. Thank for you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, wish you all the best. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.